Okay, Mrs. Cup. Well, let me. Mrs. Let me Cup. Call the meeting. Let me let me call. Oh, I thought you. Okay. Oh, no, I I just want to make sure you had your glasses on and everything, you know. Yeah. Welcome here. to this meeting of the Wooddale Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Roy Sy. I am the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Kopp. Here. Mr. Cruciani is absent. Mr. Kadala. Here. Dr. Madonna. Here. Mr. Davis is absent. Mrs. Schroeder. Here. Chairman Sy. Here. I declare a quorum present. We have three public hearings scheduled for tonight. The hearings will be transcribed by official court reporter and all testimony will be given under oath that at the hearing there will be opportunity for the public to offer testimony and to comment following the the public hearings in these cases are deliberations which be will be open to the public in the sense that all are invited to listen and to watch the public however may not speak during our deliberations <coughs> the zoning ordinance requires a prevailing vote by a majority of the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals for those matters on which will be referred to the City Council for approval and for those matters on which the Zoning Board of Appeals will make the final decision. We ask that all applicants here tonight provide general description of their proposals and give specific evidence to demonstrate the applicant's proposal meets standards of the zoning ordinance for the relief requested. The burden is on the applicant to prove the case. With respect to others who wish to speak, you will be given an opportune and given an opinion or present specific evidence, evidence as why you believe that the applicant meets or fails to meet the standards for the relief requested. Finally, we will strictly adhere to the schedule prepared for tonight's meeting. In case of an applicant or an event, you or your attorney have filed an, an appearance as an objector, you will be afforded sufficient time within to which to present your evidence. Whether you're a member of the public wishing to make a statement for the record or a witness testifying on behalf of the applicant or an objector, you'll be placed under oath and begin by stating your name and address. If you're not presenting evidence on behalf of an applicant or an objector, your remarks will be taken after the applicant and all those who have filed an appearance as objector have presented all their evidence. You will be subject to questions by the Zoning Board of Appeals and the applicant or the objector to allow as many people as possible to be heard. If you are not an applicant or objector, we request that your remarks be limited to five minutes. If additional time is needed, the hearing will be continued to the next available hearing date. I will now call the first matter before us this evening. The, the, the agenda tonight indicates we have five public hearings. We actually closed the public hearings on two matters listed we will be address those in the in the business section tonight therefore the first hearing in is case number 06-Z11 which was continued from August 21st 2006 meeting this case is in regard to the petition of Gullo International Development Corporation which requests a map amendment rezoning property located at the southwest corner of Devon and Wooddale Road from R1 single family residence to B2 retail and limited service business district for the purpose of construction and use of retail business development. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Kopp? Here. Mr. Kadala? Here. Dr. Madonna? Here. Mrs. Schroeder? Here. Chairman Sy? Here. I declare there's a quorum present. Roger, please indicate when notice of the in case number 06-Z11 was published and whether as secretary you have their certificate of publication from the newspaper. We do. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are in receipt of the certificate of publication from the Daily Herald newspaper, the notice of uh, public notice was published on August 3rd, 2006, <clears throat> excuse me, with the control number of 3791232. And a zoning sign had been placed upon the property in the appropriate location with the appropriate information. Thank you. 
Is the petitioner present? Please allow yourself to be placed under oath and, and then present information relative to the petition and the standards set out in the Wooddale Zoning Code for the requested rezoning. Excuse me, sir. What is your position with Gallo? Okay, thank you. How would you like to? How would you let me present this? Basically, we had tabled this to this meeting because of uh, at the time we had not had a contract with the city in purchasing this property yet. Now we are the contract purchaser of the property in question. I just wanted to know if the board needs to be updated on where we left off the last meeting up to this meeting or- Oh, all we did at the last meeting, we just continue. We didn't discuss Correct. it. Correct, okay. Our purpose here tonight is to basically have approval for us to get rezoning of the piece of property in question at the corner of Wooddale and Devon. It's currently known as the Eno Auto, Auto Service property. It's a building that's basically been there since vacant for approximately two years. Um, our basic, our, our zoning board of appeals, our, our standard review process is basically stating is uh, the existing use and rezoning of nearby properties adjacent to that area, basic commercial um, to the north and to the uh, west, there's basically residential communities now, as well as to the south, excuse me, to the east and to the north, there's basically retail businesses currently there. Um, to the west and the south are residential. We are currently looking to put um, to redevelop it with a retail business center there. Um, item two under the system is extent of which property values are diminished by existing zoning. Um, the existing zoning is R1. We feel like the existing site is not practical for a single family residence to be rebuilt at this site. And the reason being is it's located at the corner of Wooddale and Devon. That's our reasoning behind that. The extent, the extent of which the existing zoning or proposed zoning promotes the general health safety or welfare of the citizen or the citizenry of the city is removing of the vacant building uh, from the site and redeveloping for a betterment of the community. The relative gain to the public or compared to the hardship imposed upon the petitioner, you know, the commercial development would serve the needs and entertainment of the community. In our opinion, we have a lot of residential things going on. There's a new residential community right there. There could be several different things put in this, del this retail type development that we're proposing to do. And the retail portion, obviously, as you see on the screen, is this area here. That is the Jason Harris Bank that's on the construction of the street. This is basically the front of the bond, and this is where Woodley will be coming in at. The substantiability, uh, substantial ability of the particular property for the purposes of which they're present, presently zoned. Um, again, we go back, it's currently zoned R1, and we don't find the site, or the site is not practical for a single family residence. Um, the length of time the property has been vacant as presently zoned, considered in the context of land development in the area which is properly is located, we know it's been vacated for approximately two years at this time right now. The, combat the compatibility of the existing zoning, vis-a-vis -vis the compatibility of the proposed zoning with the existing comprehensive land use of the plan of the city. The commercial development of the site, as you see in this uh, exhibit here, is compatible with the land use plan of the city. 
And finally, the evidence or lack of evidence of community need for the proposed petitioner, which would require proposed <coughs> zoning. Uh, the removing of an abandoned building, basically an eyesore, because it, in our opinion, is an eyesore of the community at that intersection. Um, it would provide a growing, it would provide for a growing market with a, a provide for a growing residential market with commercial development. That's what our plan is. Okay, I got one quick question here. Yes. That, being that site was a, a gas station. Yes. Uh, the tanks and it has the EPA giving you a release on uh, to develop that land. We are currently yes, that has been done. A report has been filed uh, with the city of Wooddale. We're finalizing that as we speak. Yes. And it, the, the commercial building, is that going to be one building or is it going to be a series of stores? Or one building. One building. One building with uh, broken into uh, uh, retail spaces, yes, sir. Well, how, many, how many retail stores could? Uh, Approximately six right now is the, is the plan. Is there any questions from any, any members of the board? Roger, you want to give, give a quick overlay on this? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Ross is going to be placing the, uh, <clears throat> the proposed site plan on the overhead. And um, what I can start out by uh, doing is mentioning the fact that uh, Gullo International had come before uh, this body back in August of um, this year, back on the 21st. And what they had done was rezone re the property, as you see there, as uh, the lot on the left portion of Auto Shoes, re -sub or rather subdivision. And basically what this, what this particular proposal is, is not only for the rezoning from R1 to B2, it has to deal with the upper right-hand corner or the southwest corner of Devon and Wooddale Road labeled in this uh, depiction as future acquisition parcel, which is the Aino property. And um, based upon that information uh, we had received, uh, Gullo International is now looking to combine those two lots and uh, resubdivide it into lot one and lot two. And that way they can move forward with the development of that corner parcel into uh, retail commercial space. That's all I have for right now. Uh, one quick question, Roger. It, um, you have a public utility easement or how is that going to be handled on the, we on the uh, south South uh, border or south lot line of these proposed proposed. Uh. Well, certainly, uh, when the final engineering review comes through, it's going to have details with regard to their submittal for whatever they plan on that property. But as with any uh, utility easement, it must be free and clear of any encroachment by buildings or uh, permanent structures. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No comment, just one small question. And then as I see that map, so that I believe the last meeting we approved the B2 zoning for lot one and two. Yes, but it did not include the Aino this property. Parcel, which is now becoming lot one. Correct. So we are consolidating the uh, uh, future acquisition parcel with lot one. Correct, they're, lot one. they're resubdividing and unfortunately, it needed two steps to get done because the contract was not signed at that time. Okay, thank you. Is there any other any comments? Or is there anyone in objection to the petition or any member of the general public in attendance who wishes to make a comment 
or has a question for the petitioner? If so, please stand and be placed under oath. We'll come up, up here, ma'am, and could you have to go up to the podium, please? I'm going to go up to the podium, please. Oh. My question is... Uh, 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 please, into the mic, please, because you're on TV now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> of the six... Um, For your name? Janet Krebs. Okay. 173 North Oakwood. Okay. Of the six uh, stores that you're going to be renting out, do you have anyone that's interested in utilizing the space yet? Or is this pure speculation? Uh, we do not have a signed tenant at this point, no, but we are targeting in our marketing program people such as H&R Block, a fair restaurant, things like that is our goal, more higher end type retail in that area, yes. Okay. If that helps answer your question. It does. There's, there's a space in Bensonville that hasn't filled up either yet, so I'm just wondering how much strong interest you would have to fill up the spaces. We're getting a lot of strong interest right now. We're just waiting to move forward with getting the project built. Okay. The middle section that you had on your rendering, are all those uh, six units the same size, or is that the middle going to be something different? Look like the, the roof was raised. Correct. The middle section is going to be a little bit larger unit for a little bit larger type of occupants, such as a Panera, things like that. We'll need more space to make it more attractive to them. Okay. Is it... Where the uh, roof was raised up, is there any kind of skylight or something? Yes, there will be option to be able to put a skylight and have uh, light coming into the space from up above, yes. Okay. Good, thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Uh, anybody want to make a statement? Well, as soon as Roger comes back, we'll see if you can get the staff, staff recommendation concerning this petition. Roger, is there a staff recommendation concerning this, the petition? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for the delay, but uh, we needed to speak to the police department on an issue. Uh, yes, uh, staff recommends the approval of the, <clears throat> of the petitioner's request to rezone this property from R1 to uh, B2 um, for a limited services business district for the construction use of retail commercial development. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Nowak from the board concerning the staff recommendation? Mr. Chairman, I have just one small one. Uh, looking at the new lot, lot one configuration, counting that future, and looking at the parking spaces itself, has the determination been made that that would fulfill our requirement for B2? Yes, it more than, yes, it more than covers the requirements for the not only the lot area, and uh, they'll also be required to comply with any of the bulk regulations consistent with B2 zoning. Thank you. But we're, we wouldn't be doing that assessment until they submitted a plan. Is there any, any questions for Mr. Nowak from the, from the petitioner or, or from the ejector? No, sir. Okay. Hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to close this public hearing later during the meeting. The board will commence deliberations on a petitioner's request. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. There's been a motion and second. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Kopp. Yes. Mr. Cadella. Yes. Dr. Madonna. Yes. Mrs. Schroeder. Yes. Chairman Sy. Yes. This motion is carried. The public hearing on case number 06-Z11 is closed. The second matter on the agenda is case number 06-TA-12 regarding the petition of the City of Wooddale for the text amendment to the Zoning Code, Chapter 10, for an overlay district 
encompassing residential properties adjacent to Edgebrook Road and Oakwood Drive. The proposal reduces R1 lot width requirement at the building line from 80 feet to 50 feet. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Kopp? Here. Mr. Kadala? Here. Dr. Madonna? Here. Mrs. Schroeder? Here. Chairman Tsai? Here. I declare there is a quorum present. Roger, please indicate when the notice of the hearing in case number 06-TA12 was published and for purposes of the text amendment and whether as secretary you have the certificate of publication from the newspaper. Yes, but Ross has that file with that information, so he'll have to give you the uh, overview. Okay, Ross, you'll have to be sworn in, please. Inside that uh, notice was published in the Daily Herald on August 31st under control number T3807589. And furthermore, notices were mailed to all affected properties of the overlay district in addition to properties within 250 feet of the overlay district. Go ahead with your presentation. As you see up on the screen, the, the uh, is outlined the proposed overlay district. It is uh, generally the residential properties on Edgebrook and Oakwood Drive, uh, from Irving Park down to Carter Avenue. Currently, in this overlay district, there are 83 homes. The number of homes in this area may actually decrease as there are still a few properties that are remain within the floodway or floodplain, uh, which, as they become available, will be uh, take will be removed, and a few buildable vacant lots. This area is under the R2 zoning, which was uh, has been in existence since 1976, and the current R2 zoning specifies that there'll be a minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet, a minimum lot width of 80 feet. A minimum front yard setback of 25 feet, a minimum side yard setback of 10% of the lot width or 10 feet, whichever is less, a minimum rear yard setback of 30 feet, maximum principal building height of 30 feet, maximum lot coverage of 35% and a floor area ratio of 0.3. The question then is how many of these homes and lots do not meet the current zoning requirements? 68. 68 or 82% of the lots do not meet the current zoning requirements. What are the current zoning requirements that these lots do not meet? Sorry, some formatting must have changed the font, so it's not laying out perfectly, but lot width, all 68 non-conforming lots do not meet this requirement. The other is lot size. However, only three of these lots do not meet that lot size requirement of 10,000 square feet. What are the consequences for the non-conforming lots? If damaged beyond 50% by fire or other disasters, these properties could not be rebuilt without first obtaining a variation. This is something that was is viewed to not be equitable or, or fair to these properties and that they are legal, legally platted lots. Uh, what about the 75% rule, which states uh, as long as the lot is within 75% of the conforming, or within 75% of the existing zoning, it would be considered buildable. Even when applying the 75% rule, only 25 existing houses, or I'm sorry, 25 existing houses or 30% could still not be rebuilt without at first obtaining a variation. So we've, we do view this as quite a large problem for the area uh, in that Many projects, we see a, a, a large potential for new ver for variations coming in front of this board that uh, many would view as unnecessary. So the answer would be is to create an overlay zoning district. Now the overlay zoning district would use the standard zoning of the R2 district with one minor change and that we would remove the 80 foot requirement and replace it with 50 feet. All the other zoning would remain the same and there would be no other uh, variations or, or uh, changes to the zoning for this district. 
The result would be that now only three lots would remain legal nonconformity, <laughs> and the only nonconformity would be for lot size. These three lots would meet all other zoning requirements. So with this change of just uh, taking this, this one area of town from an 80-foot wide, wide lot width down to 50-foot wide would reduce our nonconformities to almost zero and allow for the properties within this district to obtain permits in a more efficient manner. Are you finished here? Yes, sir. Is there any comments from the board? Mrs. Cop? These three remaining lots, are they, uh, they already have construction on them? I do believe they have. Mr. Kadala? No, not right now. Dr. Madonna? Can you put the uh, proposed overlay district on one more time? I don't know how well you can tell, but let me, let me take a lot of 174, for example. Okay. Can you see it? Along. It obviously is one that currently would conform. There's also a lot that is currently in the floodway, which will mean that no property can ever be built on that. No, no, no residence can ever be built on that. Um, do you believe that that might be one of them? Oh, that, that lot would conform with all of our requirements. Right. The, the statistics that I was putting up about the of the properties that do not meet the zoning requirements do not include any of the properties that have already been reclaimed from the fl floodway flood. Okay. Okay. So taking this overlay district, can something like this, in effect, you, uh, as you say, you are changing it to 50 feet from 80 foot. But if someone has an 80 foot lot or a 100 foot lot now, would they then be allowed to build two homes on it? They potentially could come in for a subdivision provided they met all of the applicable requirements. Thank you. How uh, how much time and thought has staff put into you know the consideration of the fact that you're changing the essential characteristic of the neighborhood by doing this? And let me explain how. I understand that a lot of these lots are 50 feet right now. And you're looking to make that a legal conforming situation, which means that a builder, even a homeowner could come in and try to build a 3,000 or even potentially 4,000 square foot home. The essential characteristic of this neighborhood is based on the fact that you have small homes and you have old growth oak. Those two things change considerably as the Zoning Board of Appeals we're supposed to sit up here and uh, discuss and think about, you know, how a variation or a request for a variation um, changes that, that essential characteristic. I think I've kind of, I don't think this is a surprise to anybody on this board. I mean, I've always kind of pushed for this is R2. If, um, you know, if, if a builder wants to come in and do some redevelopment that, uh, you know, lot consolidation would be, uh, should be required. There is no, basically by going to a 50-foot lot legal, you're making it look like an R4 neighborhood. I understand that the lots still would, re, still would uh, meet the R2, but you don't really see that or feel that from the street. Um, I look at the Wooddale zoning map, and you know, in this whole part of town, there's, there's no R4, and you're not even that particularly close to any R3. So now I feel that this kind of stands out like a sore thumb. I mean, I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, when, when staff was going through this, you know, what, what was the thought process for, for weighing the pros and cons? You know, maybe making somebody have to do lot consolidation for, for new construction. I, I also understand that, you know, God forbid in the, in the event of a, of a tragedy, a fire, uh, tree falling on a house, whatever, where more than 50% of the value of the house is, is gone. Um, you know, a variance is required to, to rebuild, um, and, and that's unfortunate that that's a five or $600 cost, whatever it is, but I know this board would always allow that reconstruction, and I'm sure city council would too. So while that may be a process that slows things down and it may be somewhat of a financial burden, I have a hard time using that as justification to approve this overlay. I know a lot of thought's been put into it, and I appreciate that, and I like the concept, but I'm afraid it 
changes things too much. The reason to do this is not only for new construction. R new construction, quite honestly, was a very small consideration with doing this. The reason for the zoning change would be, quite honestly, uh, all of these existing properties. Let's say, or we can take my situation, if I lived in one of these houses. My wife and I recently had triplets. I would not be able to stay in that house without doing an addition. Under the current guidelines, I would have to come before this board for a zoning variation. With my time constraints that I had with, with my needs, I needed to get something done. Um, these lots were platted long before the zoning code was written. The zoning code was written in 1976. It created all these properties as non-conforming. All we're doing is basically looking at the zoning and saying, what makes sense? In this area of town, and this is not the, first, the only area of town that has this issue, and we will probably be before this board several more times over the next few years. Um, this area of town, it makes sense to have a 50-foot lot width and a, a 10,000-square-foot lot. Any other questions? I'm still worried about the three lots. Oh, okay. Um, are they, do all three of those lots that are currently in, uh, have property on them, construction on them, are, do they fall within the realm of the properties that if they were more than 50% destroyed, they could not rebuild Correct. currently? I believe, I believe the answer on that is yes. I'd like to know for sure. <laughs> because it doesn't affect them that much then if they're under that restriction anyway. <clears throat> well, the, the lots, if they're under 10,000 square feet, plus they don't meet the lot width, uh, the likelihood that they're going to meet the 75% requirement is very slim. Um, again, if there were three lots that needed to have variations because of catastrophe redevelopment, we feel that to be an acceptable number for this area of town rather than 68. Thank you. Is there anyone in objection to the petition or any member of the general public in attendance who wish to make a comment or ask a question for the petitioner? If so, please stand and be placed under oath. Are you, are you, you have, let's get, wait a minute. No, why don't you all get up here and get all sworn in at the same time? Any? Now you have to state your name and address and then okay. make your... Okay. Um, I'm nervous, so. Oh. But my name's Renee Chaboni, and I'm at 251 Oakwood. So I'm in Old Yellow, you know, the house that's in between the two lots that this whole situation has occurred because of this. I'm the one that's been in the middle, okay? The, the builder built a beautiful house next door to me. I mean, it was, he did a good job. He built it very, very well, but... The whole neighborhood has, is so upset because this, this is changing the whole atmosphere of the community. This, this is two blocks that you want to change the zoning on, two blocks. Now, the, the second lot that's next to me is way smaller. It's the 50-foot lot. There's no construction underneath it now. I've, I've, I have, I've been the one that's been mowing the lawn over there, not the builder, okay? Now, if I could have afford to pay to buy the land, I would have, but it was very expensive. Um, I think the builder bought it in good faith. He was told he, was, he could build on this lot. So it's not the builder's fault, okay? I don't know whose fault it is. I'm not laying any kind of blame or anything. But you guys are, have instituted this buying of property. 
You know, the one that's on Salt Creek, once a house is for sale, you buy it up, and then nobody can build on it again. Because there's such a big problem that's going on in this neighborhood on this one lot, I think it would be best for the community, for all the neighbors, I think it would be best for the city of Wooddale to get rid of all this legal mess, and it would be best for the builders if you guys just bought that lot like you do um, along Edgebrook, all along Saw Creek. And that's my idea, and it would solve everybody's problem. You're, you won't be changing the whole com the, um, atmosphere of the community. And we know that this, lot, this zoning change is for this one builder who's been having such a problem. And I know because I found out about it way before these letters came out. Okay. We knew it was, you know, I found out about it. And I thought it was really kind of a, it, you know, these people have lived here for years. I just moved in here two years ago. I moved in here because the first thing you saw, you see the trees, you see the atmosphere of the neighborhood. I know all the neighbors. We go, we, you know, we have, we have the neighbors sitting in my backyard all the time. We have a great time. This is the community. You guys are affecting the entire community because of this. And I, I think the best way out would be just to purchase that lot from the builder, just like you do all the other lots off of Edgebrook Road. Okay, hey, thank you for your comment. Okay. Could you stop through your first and last name, please? Yes. Oh. Does anybody have a question? Does anybody have any, any question for the objector? Uh, next, next person. I have to put this in evidence. Right? Thank you. Oh. Okay. Name's John Komarowski, two fifty six uh, Oakland Drive. Uh, um, before you get done, you'll have to give. Give a copy of this to the court reporter, and be if you can, if we can give one of the ones I just gave you guys, I just gave them to you, so you can okay take a look at them. K O M O R O W S K I. Okay, here's the first page is a copy of its zoning overlay district, and basically there's three vacant lots that are left in this area. The, and they're all on Oakwood Drive. One is between, what is it, 236 and 224, between 229 and 219, between 259 and 251. If you go to my color coding, the two green lots are basically buildable, meeting that 75% requirement. The pink lot, which we had a zoning variance hearing about last year, and was denied is the only vacant lot left in this pro in this area that is considered a non-buildable lot. If you keep going in my handout, I've got minutes from zoning meetings last year. I've got me minutes from the city council meeting from last year, and I've got the ordinance written that said this lot was not buildable. You can put this up. You, well, you got, you've got a packet, don't you? Don't you have one of these? Okay. If you go to the back of the, the pamphlet I handed out to you. Oh, wait, wait, let's uh, get it up on the, on the overlay here. Hey, Terry, just go to the pictures, the flood pictures. Okay, there you go. This was the main reason we fought the zoning over or the zoning variance last year and are fighting the zoning overlay now. This area is a flood prone, prone area. We're in the floodplain. These are pictures of my front yard because of the sewer system that backs up across the street from me. The sewer system has been repaired, but they repaired it with the same size pipe, which made absolutely no sense. This whole thing, all of this water coming down is all coming off of the church parking lot. It's got nowhere to go. If you... Okay. 
All of this water is coming within 10 feet of the front of my house. If you go to the next picture, Terry, this is my backyard. We back up to Salt Creek. The first two pictures are of pictures with houses still on them. Before the city bought them and tore them down. The bottom two pictures are after the city bought the properties, tore the houses down, we're still having the flooding there. You know, by reducing this lot size to 50 foot, what's gonna stop a builder from coming in, tearing down these homes, and putting up these little McMansions? And when they're putting up these homes, what's the lot coverage percentage that they're putting up on these homes? They're, they're putting them to the max. They're putting them to 35% so they can recoup all of their money back for buying the house and the cost of tearing it down and rebuilding. So I, I'm totally against this uh, zoning overlay. That's all I've got. Is, is there anybody wish to question this person? I'll ask a question. When it rains, where does that water come from? The sewer. No, the so storm sewer coming down off of the church parking lot. The, the, the post office parking lot. Right now, because it goes down my driveway. I had, to, I had to move my driveway from one side to the other because of the building. Who is the city's floodplain wait, manager? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, Ma'am, yes. uh, give the court reporter your name again. Oh, on your name. Shivani. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Who's the city's floodplain manager? Why aren't they present to be able to ask questions or answer questions about the flooding of this area? Because supposedly the flood area was enlarged last year. We did receive a letter from the mayor stating this, that this area was expanded. Well, maybe Roger can help you on that. Who, who handles that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That would be the Director of City Services, Mr. Gary Holm, who is not available to be in attendance. You know, I think we need some answers from him as to what the impact of all of these homes, all of the new homes that are going to be coming in because of teardowns, what impact they're going to have on the city storm and sanitary sewers also. You know, these systems were built many years ago. They replaced the sanitary lines but they replaced, again, with the exact same size that was in there. They didn't upgrade the system when they had the streets torn up. Same thing with the sewer line that they just replaced. They didn't oversize it. They replaced it with the exact same size pipe that was there that kid couldn't handle the water in the first place, back pitched or not. I was home last Monday when we had the rains. The rain didn't come down that heavy. It didn't cross the street like it did, but that sewer was working at full capacity. The ditch across the street from my house was totally filled. Just because it didn't come across the street doesn't mean that the next time we don't we have a heavy rain, it's not going to come across the street and flood my home again. Is there any other person make a comment on, on the, this this man's uh, opinion? Okay, thank you. Good evening. Thank you uh, for uh, allowing me to speak here. Uh, what Your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Terry Cassioppo. I'm at 260 Oakwood Drive. Did you say 60? 260. Thank you. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm not happy to be here tonight. Um, I think, you know, I don't know as residents why we're here asking the zoning official to enforce the zoning laws as they were written. That just seems ridiculous to me. Um, you know, why are we, why are we increasing density in, in a flood-sensitive uh, area? There's no question that Wooddale floods. You're all residents of Wooddale. You know the problems we've had. We've all, we're all long-term residents. We know what it's like. 
So why are we increasing density in a flood sensitive area, especially this area, the most flood sensitive area? Well, in my opinion, what I see, it's about profits, okay? And I, I'll tell you what, when I settled in this community with my wife to raise my kids, I chose this community, I love this community. You know, I didn't move to Stone Park. I didn't move to uh, Cicero where there's uh, investors, city officials investing in land in the area that have influence over land use in this community and I refuse to allow it to happen. And that's what I think this is about, okay? So what I'm suggesting is that this, I'm asking the board um, as residents, when I look at the board, I see residents of the community, I see people who I see uh, around the community who understand what we're going through and to change the law for one contractor who's not a resident, who isn't a part of this community, who's simply in it to make a profit. Now granted, I don't blame the contractor. I think the contractor got a stiff deal because we all know what this is about. But that being said, um, I'm asking the board on several levels that there are so many ethical reasons why this is wrong to approve this. And, you know, we as citizens have a right to come up here and, and uh, defend our, our livelihood. Our homes are our livelihood. That's our largest investment. 